Committee, Otto Fajan speaking on behalf of the Missouri National Education Association. We want to speak in opposition only to those provisions that relate to the school protection officer. Uh, we have no position on the, the, the rest of the bill. Uh, I actually want to spend most of my three minutes thanking you and also to our schools for the responses that have always already been done, uh, which partly explains why we think the school protection officer language should not be, become the law. Uh, as you may be aware, many schools all over the state have already responded in one of the important responses uh, to ensure safety. And our, my 34,000 members all work in public schools. It's their workplace. Our very first platform section, deal A1, deals with school safety. Uh, schools have generally changed their policies on access. I know as a, as a parent of five in Columbia, all the schools I go to, uh, I have to be buzzed in during the school day. That was one of the responses that has helped improve school safety. Uh, we also appreciate the passage of the extension on the sunset uh, language uh, for closure plans. Schools all across the state are supported by a national leading organization that helps schools plan for emergencies of all kinds, including uh, incidents around, around school property. The legislature also passed House Bill 152, allowing school districts to commission police officers and Senate Bill 75 dealing with the training of folks to respond to uh, emergencies. The school protection officer language, however, seems flawed uh, and fraught with difficulties. And any school district that chooses to try to implement it is going to incur a lot of problems. The number one thing I'll just focus your attention on is liability, both the employees and the district. No association that represents any school employees, including administrators, provides liability insurance that would cover the liabilities taken on by the individual uh, for being a, not only a full-time instructor but taking on the duty of also being a school protection officer and districts will not be able to protect themselves by the purchase of insurance. Uh, this is a conversation we've had in the education roundtable amongst the groups. So any district that might, and it, the, the other technical concern is the bill is fraught with uncertainty about exactly how that would be done. When it, it doesn't mandate school work policy. It doesn't require notice. So there's going to be some uncertainty about whether or not there are people who have those uh, things uh, on their possession, whether they've been so designated, whether or not when the training and the, uh, the, the secret uh, training exercise comes about, whether we now have somebody who's armed on the premises but didn't get the memo about that this is actually not a real, a for real attack. Uh, there's a lot of concerns. Uh, a lot of my members have looked at this kind of legislation and say, my goodness, a lot of my peers have a hard time keeping track of their school room keys. Uh, the idea that they would be responsible for keeping a concealed weapon on their person in the midst of a school day, all day long, every school day, uh, is of concern to them. That's, that's why we believe this is one provision too many. We appreciate all the provisions, the responses the legislature has already taken last year, and the responses that the schools have done to make sure that we focus on and keep our students safe. But that would be happy to try to answer any questions. Thank you for your testimony, and um, I know that I know that there's uh, very little chance of changing your mind on this, but maybe just for the benefit of uh, those who have heard some of your concerns, um, I will I, I will remind you and anybody listening in that um, the provisions in this bill that talk about school safety officers do not in any way, shape, or form mandate that a school participate in this program. Number one, a school through their school board, their administration, a school has to determine that they want to participate in the safety officer program. <coughs> the school district will not be forced by the state. The school district will not be mandated by the state. Therefore, any school district that chooses as a school district to not participate will simply not participate. Number two, if a school district as a district decides to participate, the next thing that would have to happen is there would have to be people within that school district, employees of that school district that would take an interest in being a school safety officer and then volunteer. No one within the school district, no employee of the school district would ever be mandated to participate in the school safety officer program. They would have to come forth and say they <coughs> want to do it. After they said they want to do it, they have to go to post training, which is basically the same thing that a police officer has to go to. If they make it through post training, then they would have the ability to serve as a school protection officer. So number one, in review, perhaps you'll commit this to memory, is that school districts are not compelled to participate in this program. They don't have to. 
If the local school board and school administrators decide they would like to, then they can. I suspect most school districts will not, but some may. The next hurdle is, if the school district as a district decides that they want to participate in the program, then there has to be employees who have their own volition come forward and say, I'd like to be a school safety officer. The next hoop is they have to make it through post-training. When all those things happen, the concern that teachers have expressed that they can't keep track of their notebooks, I don't think a post-qualified school safety officer is going to lose a gun like a regular person would lose a notebook. <clears throat> and so, since what I'm supposed to be doing here is asking you questions, I'll just ask you, do you think that someone who has been through, post, someone who, number one, said, I want to be a school safety officer, and then number two, went through the rigors of post-training, do you think that they would leave a gun laying around willy-nilly like a school teacher does a notebook? Certainly not out of intention. Okay. Thank you. you have questions? Two questions. Senator Machine. Uh, well, I was wanting to know, do you know how much time is post-training? How much time do you have to go through? I'm not an authority on the, the, the specifics of the training. Okay. All right, uh, one, one other thing. So, basically, those individuals can carry guns <coughs> throughout the school, right? Once they go through all of the stats that the Senator just... That appears to be authorized, yes. Okay. And when, when are they allowed to use the gun? Uh, they are allowed to detain a person. Uh, I think it's for violations, perceived violations of state law or school is it policy or rule. I, forget which thing. I don't know. Can they, they, can, can, they, can they shoot and kill for a purpose or reason? Bodily harm and whatnot? I don't, know, I don't believe that it, it, it specifies. So, what's, I mean, what's, what's the logic behind having those individuals carry guns they, in the school? Senator. Center, they do have the same authority to, to detain or use force against any person on school property as provided to any other person under Chapter 563. Like a police officer? Yes. Oh my God. Are you kidding? No, that's page seven. Okay, so, no, I'm through. I'm done. Oh. <laughs> any other questions for this witness? Thank, Thank you so much. Much. Um, okay, here's what's going to happen. For those of you that are in favor of this bill, we're going to make a, a strategic decision right now. And that is, do you want the bill passed out of committee and headed to the full Senate floor today, or do you want it to go next week? And then you would have to measure your desire to speak today with your desire to get this done today. You carrying a bill for them? So I'm going to make I'm going to make an executive decision and tell you that it would it would not behoove you to continue to testify in favor of this bill. Look at the committee and ask yourself if you really need to do that. Who would like to speak for informational purposes only? <coughs> for informational, because we have to do that. We've we've done pro and con, but we have not done informational purposes. If you come forward, sir, and fill out a witness form.